21st of October Lead Code Challenge. I know I am a lot late, but solving a question is more important. I hope most of my subscribers would be able to solve this question by themselves. If you are new to Coding Decoded, then I am there to help you and this video is specifically for those who are new to the channel. The problem says, you are given an array of integers and an integer value k. What do you need to do? You need to check whether there exist two distinct pairs i and j in this array such that both the elements at ith index and jth index hold the same value and the distance between i and j absolute bracket i minus j simply signifies the distance between those two indexes is less than or equal to k. If both these conditions are met, we need to return true, otherwise we need to return false. This is the series contains duplicates. We have already solved the first and the third part of this series. This is something that is new and I feel this is an easy question. Lead code also feels the same. They have provided us with few examples. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it. Why the presentation? So let's quickly hop on to it. In the head, let's talk about the same example that was specified in the question. The question says check if these two conditions are met, there exist two indexes i and j such that the value at both these indexes are equal and the distance between i and j is less than or equal to k. How are we going to solve this up? So here in this example, we are given the value of k as 3 and the numbers that are given to us is 1, 2, 3, 1, 9, 7. So let me just write those indexes up 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a map and the key of this map would be the integer value, the element present in our array and the value of this map would be the index at which it is present. So let's start the iteration. So this is of type integer comma integer. This is the element itself. This is the index. So let me just write this as well. Moving ahead, let's start the iteration. The first element that we see happens to be one. Is one part of our map? Not yet. So let's make an insertion and we'll insert one at the zero index. Let's proceed ahead. The next element that we see is two. Is two part of our map? No, it's not part of our map. So we will create a new element two and we'll insert it at one index. Is three part of our map? No, it's not. Three gets inserted at second index. The next element that we see happens to be one. So we will check whether one is part of the map or not. Yes, it is part of the map. At what index does it occur? It occurs at the zeroth index. So what you're going to do, you'll calculate the distance between the current occurrence of one, which is three minus zero. So three minus zero gives you what? It gives you three. Is three less than equal to three? Yes, it is. We will abort the process and we will return true because this condition is met. So the answer for this perhaps a problem turns out to be true. Let's take the negative one another case as well so that you guys get a good hold of the underlying concept. Let me just write indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And let's start the iteration. The first element is 1, let's add 1 at 0th index. The next element is 2, let's add 2 at 0th index, uh, at first index. The next element is 3, let's add 3 at second index. Let's add 4 at third index. Next element that we have happens to be 1. Is 1 part of the map? Yes, it is part of the map. At what index does it occur? It occurs at the 0th index. So we subtract 4 by 0. What do you get? You get 4. 4 is greater than 3. The condition is This condition is not met. As a result of which, we will not abort the process. We will look out for more possibilities of answers. And since this can never lead to a solution, what we are going to do? We will update the index at which 1 occurs from 0 to 4. So let's update it to 4. Let's proceed ahead. The next element is 9. So let's add 9. 9 occurs at 5th index. The next element happens to be 1. Again we see a 1. 1 occurs at 6th index. And again what we are going to do? We'll extract the index at which 1 occurs. It is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 happens to be less than or equal to 3. The condition is met, it's a happy case, we, we abort the process and return to. In case we do not find any position where this condition and this condition happens to be same, we simply say false as a default case. The time complexity of this approach is order of n, the space complexity of this approach is again order of n. To conclude it further, let's quickly walk through the coding section. 
in the first go what do we do we check if what is the value of k if it is equal to 0 we simply return false otherwise we go ahead and create our hash map we start the iteration from i equals to 0 go up till i dot less than length and we, with each iteration we check if the element at nums dot i index already exists in my hash map if it does exist that means our first condition is met uh, now it's time to check for the second condition and i minus whatever index is returned from hash map dot get nums of i this simply returns the jth index if i minus j is less than equal to k we simply abort the process and return true otherwise we update our hash map we update the value of present at nums of i comma i so this represents the index this represents the value once we are out of this for loop that means true condition was never seen we simply return false because there was never a case where both these conditions were met so let's try and submit this up accepted with this we have successfully completed today's sleep code session i hope you enjoyed it fully and understood the concept the time complexity of this approach is order of n the space complexity is again order of n the, the question is based on the concept of maps i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question